Hi, this is Noah with Advice from a Young Tradesman TV, and this video is all about my chemical stripping process for exterior wood. I'm going to show the setup, the stripping, and the brightening on a beautiful tiger wood deck alongside my SOP document for this process. There is a lot packed into this one. It is kind of a long one, so if you want to skip around to particular phases of this whole thing, there are timestamps below in the description. And if you do want to see a part two about sanding and some finish oiling on this deck, uh, there will be a link somewhere around here and in the description below. Enjoy. All right, step one, observe the work zone. We want to make sure we have enough time with preferably the sun not beating down on the deck to do the setup, the stripping, the wash, the chemical brightening, and more washing. So based on the size of the deck, the scope of it, how hard the strip is going to be, really try to budget enough time where the deck looks almost exclusively like that. You can mitigate it if the sun's beating down on it. We will talk about that, but it is much better to have it like this. So whether or not I'm painting or staining the siding, I will generally protect it uh, with some masking plastic, just about a foot high. You don't need much, but it's, whatever you're doing, it is much easier not to have sludge or chemical on it to worry about. As far as plants near the work zone go, it is important to pre-wet any of them that might get misted with chemicals and then keep them wet during the process and rinse them after. Be mindful of anything that's below the deck that you might not want to get chemicals or chemical sludge on. It is generally easier to plastic things and cover them than to clean it after. Okay, we are all done prepping for this. I'm going to show you a couple last things. It helps to know a couple different tapes, what they do, when to use them. As you can see, I switched from the Blue Frog, which is a general purpose one, to the green 3M rough surface one. Uh, this one just sticks to slightly dirty, porous, uh, basically non-flat, easy stuff. So I did that for the stone. Purple 3M is their delicate. And since this is going to be kind of a spillover area where we're going to have to walk and take off boots that probably still have some chemical on them, and we could very easily damage this beautiful mahogany floor if we let any chemicals get on them, I wanted to put plastic here. It's windy, we want to tack it down, but because this is a finished floor, we want to use the most delicate tape possible. So, I know we're getting in the weeds here, but it's important. Um, so yes, we are now ready down below. We are ready up here. We are not actually doing anything to protect these railings because they're a little rotten. They're gonna get replaced in the next few months or next spring, so the client said, don't worry about them at all. If I had to worry about them, I would probably just be masking that post and not worrying about that too much. I might do the underside of it, but basically you're not gonna, you're not really gonna get much on that. If you are, if you're worried about it, tape it, plastic it, mask it, it's easy. Okay, all our property is finally protected, so now we have to protect ourselves. How far I go with this depends on how I'm applying it. If I am spraying a mist onto a wall that's likely to come back into my face, I'm definitely going to mask up respiratory protection. You do not want any of this chemical mist in your respiratory system. If you are doing something overhead where it'll be directly dripping on you, full rain suit, no expense spared. For this, it's pretty easy. So Sherwin-Williams Remove is a really viscous product. I'm actually gonna be rolling this stuff on and then kind of brushing it and working it in. That's the quickest way to apply it. So it's not gonna be flying everywhere. I don't want it on my feet, so I have just cheap $20 chemical resistant rubber boots. And then just for good measure, in case I gotta grab something or touch something on the floor, these and eye protection for good measure. But this is a pretty low key one. This one's pretty easy. So personal protection is minimal. What I generally do for most jobs that aren't as burly as this is buy it in about a 10 pound powdered bag and mix it up to ratios depending on how I need it. That's about 10 times more cost effective than buying anything you're gonna find in any retailer's uh, prepackaged chemical stripper. Every single paint retailer, big box store has a chemical stripper. The active ingredient is always sodium hydroxide, but as a contractor, I like to get that good unit price and be really cost effective. The only reason I'm using this right now is because we're trying to strip 
an oil-based film forming finish. That, this, if you poured water on it right now, it would beat it up. There's still a lot of surface tension. The special thing about this is that it's a really viscous gel. The nice thing about it is it stays really wet for a long time so you can get a nice dwell time. And it's just really good at it just working in, clinging, and dissolving those, those sometimes harder to remove finishes. So, test don't guess. You never want to mix up a ratio of a stripper and apply it to the entire deck without knowing if it's actually gonna work like you think it should. I've done this enough to know that this is gonna eat through this perfectly. This is a known quantity for me. But if I have any question about how my stripper is gonna eat through the finish, I will take an inconspicuous spot, put a little down, wait, let it dwell, take a soft bristle brush after five or 10 minutes and just brush it a little bit. If the finish comes off easily, if it's kind of dissolving or emulsifying, turning kind of green and brown, and you can pretty easily see the wood beneath, that's gonna work, that's fine. And then scale up from there. But never guess when you're doing something this big. It's not that you only get one chance, but the first chance is the best time to just do it right perfectly. It gets more difficult if you fail the first time and then have to do it again. So. You also want to make sure decking grooves are cleared out. If you're in a place with a lot of trees, a lot of moisture, dirt in between them, that chemical is not really getting into the, the cracks in between the wood. So it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect, because you're going to wash it, but you don't want all of the grooves to be clogged up with mud and pine needles and stuff like that. This deck, there's not a ton of trees around, so it's not a big deal, but that's something to keep in mind too. Okay, so I like to mix up my brightener before I start any stripping. Sometimes when you get into the stripping process, it just starts going kind of quick and gets away from you. So it's good to have everything pre-mixed. So I am using F18 from a website called Pressure Tech. They are pretty much my go-to supplier for most of my wash and strip chemicals. Um, this is what the box looks like. What is it? This is basically oxalic acid powder. You can buy chemical brighteners at just about any paint store any big box store. They're gonna say brighteners, neutralizers, it is all the same thing. It is an acid. Either citralic acid or oxalic acid. That is all it is. There's a lot of buzzwords, marketing hype. This is the raw ingredient. So I buy this, 10 pounds is about 30 bucks, and this will go months for me. So if you're doing a lot of this, do something like that. It's a way better unit price, and it comes with really good instruction sheets with all of the products. And for this, for brightening and neutralizing after a chemical strip, we're gonna use four ounces per gallon. Always mix up ample amounts in your bucket. What you don't want is to run out mid-brightening and have to make a new batch. Um, different ratios, different batches can yield different results in terms of brightness, and that looks like trash in the finished product. So over mix, it's never bad to have more. So four ounces per gallon, I like to have rubber gloves high and eye protection on because this stuff, once it interacts with any moisture anywhere, you have a little bit of sweat on your hand, you're going to get an acid burn. Dry, it doesn't do anything, but take precautions. Protect yourself. I keep a four ounce cup in this bag. And this isn't baking, it doesn't have to be perfect. Most directions will say mix with warm water, and that's because it just helps these crystals dissolve better. It still works with cold water, you just have to stir it a little more, and that's another advantage of doing this before you knead it and letting it sit. Um, it'll, it'll break down and dissolve more in the mixture. So that is four four ounce servings for four gallons. Get that away from anywhere where there might be water splashing. And this was just what I had nearby. This is what I'm, what I'm gonna mix with, but you can pretty much use anything. And I just mix it until you really can't see this, the uh, oxalic crystals anymore. And then you're good to go. Just set it aside and you're all ready. All right, we're finally here. Apply the stripper. So 
like I said, I'm going to do this, this gel with a high nap roller, and then I'm going to back brush to work in the cracks. We're not doing the railing systems, but if we were, we would do the horizontals, the ground first before we did these. Reason being, suppose you were doing these and you sprayed chemical all over or brushed and you were dripping this chemical onto the dry surface. What that would do is put marks in there where it's dissolving the finish or affecting the wood at a different rate than all the wood around it if it's just little drop marks. The thing about chemical stripping that's a universal rule, stripping or brightening, is that different ratios, different dwell times, di different absorption rates yield different results. So again, if you were doing both, you would saturate the floor first and then saturate the high part so that any drops that go down are hitting already saturated floor with the same ratio. Not a complication for this, we're ignoring these, but oftentimes you have to do both verticals and horizontals, start with the bottom, work up. Okay, so as you can see, I have a strong half of this section done. If it looks wet and kind of saturated, it is because after I roll out the gel, this is the main strong stripper, one trick you can do, most products will say don't let it dry out, mist it if it does. I like to actually mist with more liquid stripper when I'm doing a process like this. So I just mixed up a kind of medium to light batch just so that if the, if, if the stripper needs a little more on the ground, I'm adding not water and diluting the mix in there, but more sodium hydroxide and strengthening, strengthening it. So just walk you through what this looks like. Rolling? Rolling is the best option. I don't really love any. This stuff is way too viscous to put into a chemical pump. It just doesn't work. Uh, brushing, it's kind of slow. This feels clunky. I don't often have to use this stuff, so it kind of is what it is. I've wondered about using a mop or something giant like that, but haven't gotten to it yet. You can see some leaves have fallen. I've picked them up doesn't really matter as long as I am laying out a nice film I'm not gonna stress it and if you look in the pan you see that there's some kind of green in there and what that is is when I roll back onto the sections that, that have already been done I am picking up some of that dissolved old finish and putting it back in here. So that's how you know it's working. So I'm gonna do one more roll and I'll show you what I do with the brush and the sprayer. When you rinse, this is getting a little ahead, but consider that the time it takes you to get from one end of the deck to the other might be, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes. So don't rinse prematurely before the last part you did is actually ready. All right, so now I'm just gonna get any parts, like this cut near the wall that the roller couldn't get well. I don't like rolling too close to the wall, so you can rip it. And then I just like to give it a once over, make sure it's in the cracks. Get this out of the way, not touching the deck. And then we take our slightly more dilute mixture and really lock that in. Watch out, the deck will be slippery. All right, we are all applied. I've backed myself out here. My boots that might have stripper on it are safe on the plastic so we're not discoloring this floor. Now, how long to let it dwell? When I was applying, I did talk about misting it with more stripper or water. Either or, I think stripper is just a little bit better. And dwell time is really gonna depend on what you're trying to take off. This, 
I bet it's going to be about 10, 10-ish minutes. Obviously that end is going to get a little more and I'm going to keep it wet while I work my way down here with a garden hose or more stripper. Okay, so rinse time. I've rinsed this whole deck once and you will notice I'm holding a garden hose. The concept behind this soft washing is chemicals are going to do all the work for you. So if your chemicals do the work for you in terms of dissolving, degrading, the old finish, you don't really need a lot of pressure. You just need a high volume of water. Where a pressure washer comes in, in handy is that it can pump a lot of water quickly across a surface. If I was using a pressure washer, I would be using a wide fan on a nozzle called the X-Jet nozzle. That basically lowers the pressure a ton and gives me a high volume of water to just move all of that old finish and dirty water off quicker. Um, but totally possible with the garden hose because again, it's just a little slower. You don't need pressure. You just need volume moving across the surface. Another reason I'm not using a pressure washer is because this place is on a well and I'm a little bit concerned about the well's output relative to my pressure washer's input. My pressure washer needs four gallons per minute and that's a little bit higher than I think this well can pump out and I actually don't like to push it if I'm at someone else's house in the middle of nowhere. So the other reason too is there's a screened in porch right here that does not drain water out very well or not at all. If I was pressure washing around here, it would definitely be uh, splashing in there. There'd be nowhere for it to go. There'd be a lot of cleanup and I might damage the floors. So this isn't the kind of place where I want to be spraying a ton of water around. I want really controlled the garden hose. Uh, does that too. So it doesn't take that much longer on a deck of this size. It's not all that big. Um, and I think it's worth the lack of collateral damage. So one important thing to note about the rinse after the stripper is you're going to make sure that you have all of the old finish off, all of the gunk. You know, that water isn't running brown or green anymore. So I got the majority of it. You will notice bubbles. And you might be tempted to just keep rinsing, keep rinsing, keep rinsing, thinking that you're only done when the bubbles stop. The bubbles will never stop. You can do this forever. There will still be bubbles there. The next step of neutralization or brightening, whatever you want to call it, same thing, will get rid of the bubbles in addition to brightening the wood and neutralizing the pH. So don't obsess on this stage. Once it is pretty much clean and there's no standing water, you can brush that out with a soft bristle brush then you are ready to move on to brighten. Okay, next step. If it didn't work or wasn't thorough enough, um, I don't love when this happens, but I am actually grateful this happened while we were filming this thing because I get to actually show you this step if it didn't work because this didn't work the first time. Uh, this happens on really heavily built clear coats. Uh, there was so much film there that sometimes the first layer of stripper just dissolves that top film like you saw it went through it really easily but by the time it gets to what you're seeing here this kind of reddish unevenly applied finish that remains sometimes by the time the stripper gets to that it's lost its oomph and you got to give it another pass i took that backpack pump sprayer and just put a light mist on this little section after it mostly dried out and as you can see, it doesn't need much to take the rest of that off. Um, there's still a few spots because I didn't really give it too hard of a once over. I just wanted to make sure that another coat of relatively light stripper would dissolve the rest of this and it will. So this isn't a huge deal. Sometimes you need to wait for it to actually dry. This was overnight in this case to really see what you're working with instead of just guessing while it's still all kind of dark and wet. Um, but the remedy for this is just another coat, do it again and we'll check back in before we move to brightening. All right, so this is after the second pass, and what we're looking at here, uh, just so you can troubleshoot yourself, the dark, the black, the brown, that is bare wood, that is where there's no finish, everywhere else there's finish, and that is how easily we want it coming off. It's just straight up melting. So if you're pressure washing, you can just pressure wash that off. You don't need to scrub at all. And if you are garden hosing, you'll do a, a quick stiff bristle brush, something like that first, and then a rinse. So that is that. That's how you know when it's ready. 
All right, finally, we are brightening. Hard earned on this deck, not so much on most others, but we are here. This is the easy last step. This is a saturating coat and then a rinse. This is nowhere as near as the stripper, uh, near as difficult as the stripper. Why is this important? There's a reason that at every Sherwin or Ben Moore retailer, if you buy stripper, they are cued to remind you to buy the brightener because a lot of people say, what's this for? What's the point? Do I really need this? And the answer is yes, 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 yes. So here's a little bit of why. Again, sodium hydroxide is the key stripping ingredient that is really high in the pH scale, 12-ish, very caustic, alkaline. We want to neutralize that, bring it closer to seven, normal water, by treating the same surface with an acid. So again, we're using an oxalic acid-based neutralizer that in effect also will brighten the wood, which is why those terms are used interchangeably, brightener, neutralizer. Here is a little homemade chemical pump. Down there is an on-demand electric pump and the inflow tube is in a bucket of oxalic acid mix. So this basically allows me to apply it very quickly in a wide fan pattern because remember we're just trying to saturate very quickly. So I will go over here, start doing that. I have already done the skirt boards on the outside because remember, bottom up. So This is okay if you get a little bit on the house, not the end of the world. This isn't gonna eat through any finish. If the wind was a little different, I might have a mask on. If I was doing something overhead, I might have a mask on. But this is really easy to shoot directly at the ground. good practice to assume the same rules apply in terms of plants, things like that. If it's in the sun, you don't want to get plants saturated with this stuff and let it dry on them. This can clean certain materials. If this was really, really filthy, it would be cleaning that. Acids are good cleaners, remember? But it's not, and I'm gonna rinse it soon. Not terribly concerned about that. Okay, so we are all saturated. Uh, again, the goal is a really quick, quick as possible, quick as your equipment will let you saturating coat. You just want to get the wood soaked in this stuff. You don't have to scrub. You don't have to do anything complicated. You're just letting this stuff soak into the wood, neutralize the pH, brighten it. That all just happens. It should start being noticeably brighter and you know, usually within a few minutes if your ratio is, is good enough. And I will just let this sit for a few. Once it seems like it stops getting lighter and lighter, I'm going to rinse it off, either pressure wash or garden hose it off. Again, no scrubbing. You're not removing anything. This acid is just treating the wood. Rinse it top to bottom now, and then walk away. You're done. This process is totally complete, and you now are just waiting until the wood is at about 15% moisture content to either stain or paint it. So that's it. Okay, we are done. Final rinse after the brightening. And as you can see, it looks absolutely gorgeous. This, I'm not gonna lie, this was the hardest deck strip I've done in my entire career. And it happened to be while I was filming this. So I am uh, grateful that I got to go through all the, if that goes wrong, uh, contingencies and include them in here. But what you should know is if you follow that guide, it will, it will give you the context to think for yourself if something goes wrong like that. As long as you don't do anything egregious, it's rarely ever lost. So yeah, 
This one looks great. A couple closing notes. Generally, what I will do on a deck like this, inform the client not to walk on it for you know two, three days until we can come back and stain it. Uh, if there are access points to that, the outer yard that maybe kids or dogs or something are gonna run up, block them off. And depending on what product you're using, you're waiting until the moisture content drops to 15 to 20%. Or if you don't have a moisture meter, two or three good days of warm and good wind and drying conditions to really have a guarantee. One quick note, if you're wondering why these boards are all super light and don't match at all, they're non-contemporaneous. They were not put in at the same time as these. And my money is on that corner becoming a rot spot. And that necessitated these three getting replaced. And unfortunately, you can actually see this one rotting already. I don't know when these were replaced, but if anyone tells you that exotic hardwoods can't rot, false. Bad building can make anything rot. So that really shouldn't be a thing, but that's not in my scope. Um, I'm going to use Sherwin-Williams Super Deck Transparent Oil in a color called Canyon Brown, and that's going to blend it pretty well. Not perfectly, obviously, but it will even it out so there's not this light stripe going through it. So that is my whole series on stripping and chemically brightening a deck with all of the twists and turns. So thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it.